If you are stuck in the grind and don't know how to get moving, if you have lost your dream or struggled to know how to make it happen, if you have been dreaming of changing the world, but you're not sure where to start, the Add Valued Entrepreneurs podcast will help you transform your life with tools, knowledge, and support that will allow you to create a thriving business that aligns with your values and goals. This podcast is for entrepreneurs who want more freedom and fulfillment from the work they do so they can live the life they desire. You deserve it. It is possible. This show features interviews with people who have already created success in their lives and businesses and stories about everyday people living extraordinary lives. It's time for you to add value. My guest today is Heath Soderstrom. He's a retired MMA fighter, all-American wrestler, and college football player. After he chased his dreams and achieved them, he decided to empower his friends and family to achieve their dream of home ownership in Colorado. He is your warrior in the fight for your home story. Heath, thank you so much for joining me today. I'm just excited to, to share your story and uh, just hope it'll be inspirational to others as it is has been to me. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. I love uh, inspiring people to do <laughs> So tell me a little bit about your journey. Obviously, you went from a college athlete to professional athlete to entrepreneur. And would you share that that story with the audience? Well, I really wanted to be a professional athlete. I wanted to be in the Hall of Fame of the NFL, right? And uh, I learned through this journey that specification on goals is really important because it just came to a point where I was like, I just want to be a professional athlete. And I did. I became a professional athlete three times over, MMA fighter, boxer, and professional indoor football player. Um, it's been a fun journey in the sense that I get to do the things that I want to do on my time. So as I looked into retiring and my career and what I wanted ahead of me, I really needed that as part of it. So... I became a realtor in Colorado, and I had my license when I first started my MMA career. I started punching people in the face for a living. I just didn't utilize it. It's probably the only thing that I look back on. I was like, you could have did something a little better on that. But the, the journey has been fantastic in the sense of realizing that in this life, you can do what you want to do and still get paid for it. I got paid to play a game. I got paid to play a sport. And now I get paid to help my friends and family find their friends. So it's uh, been a, a wild, wild ride. So let's, so let's talk about your professional athlete experience and, and how has that prepared you for, for being an entrepreneur? Oh, I mean, I stood by my professional athlete experience was based off of an acronym that I changed from what it used to be to what I stated called FOAD, Fearless Overcoming Attitude and Determination. I think it's four words to sum up what I believe my definition of tough. Tell people to be tough, right? Stand back up. Enforce your will and enforce what you want to do. Play to your strengths. Um, but when you're in the MMA and wrestling and, and those kinds of atmospheres, you're going to get knocked down. You got to get back up. And that's part of being tough. That's part of overcoming the obstacles that are in your way. And I live that to this day, something that I believe in. So that's my, my base, my, my rock. So what has been one of the biggest challenges of, transitioning from from athlete to entrepreneur one of the biggest challenges i have is rebranding right like allowing people to know i'm a realtor instead of uh MMA. i went by a stage name called big Sexy, and everybody still knows and calls me um even down to my look right like i had a certain look that i had in the ring and if you bring that into realty and real estate, people are going to identify you as the MMA fighter, not the realtor. So that's been kind of the, the thing that stuck 
and it's been the most difficult to overcome because I branded myself pretty well as a fighter. And it's and it doesn't always translate um, to, to real estate, right? <laughs> We we want to we want a fighter if if we're going downtown and, and going to be in the back alley right but <laughs> I don't know that I, I want a, a fighter doing my negotiating. <laughs> I mean, if you were April May June this year, you would want a fighter in there. <laughs> you were fighting off 40, 50 people offering hundred thousand dollars over asking cash deals things like that. So in a sense, it depends on. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want that house? And I'll go fight for it. <laughs> nice. I like it. So there is still some room for the fighter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to persevere. Oh. <laughs> so how value has connection been as you transitioned? Say it one more time. Connection? I mean, it, it's, it's the absolute biggest thing in my industry is the relationships and connecting with people, being able to – create rapport quickly, find interests that we share. Those are all major parts of my marketing plan, how to become a friend, how to become a relationship building person to then assess and help them with their, their needs in real estate. Absolutely. So I know you're, you're, you're young and rebuilding, rebranding your real estate business, but What's been most effective in building an audience? Mm, the, I, getting out there, doing the things, right? <laughs> like creating the podcast for Denver Small Business Network, having my face on there every single week, um, doing the three oh, showing the 303 show that I do on my Instagram where I go and find a home that I can show my network. And within that, I give you an incentive to buy it within the next seven days if you use me as your realtor it's been uh the concepts have come together but i always knew that i was going to do something as kind of a show and to be out there and be in front of people and you can see each time that you knock one of those shows out of the park or you have really good content on on my social media that my following goes up the people interact with it more putting yourself out there. Don't worry about it until a year later when you got some, some evidence and some, some data to now analyze, then you figure out where to go from there. Yeah, you definitely, you have to be in motion to be able to, uh, to, to make adjustments, right? <laughs> true. Very true. You can't, uh, you can't change it. If you, you can't evaluate your performance if you don't have a performance to evaluate. <laughs> And it's coming into real estate, um, not understanding. Like, I didn't look at the numbers. I knew I wanted to be a realtor. But I sat down in my first meeting, and he's like, there were 1,600 deals that got done in the month of April when I came in. And he's like, do you know how many realtors are in our area? I was like, no. And he showed me the number 2,500. I was like, Okay, I see where I'm sitting, right? I see where I'm starting. At. I am really behind the eight ball. And as you take your steps and you show people that you are honest and trustworthy, you're going out there with a sense of fidelity to them, fiduciary, sorry, fiduciary duties to them. And it's about being a servant to your client. I think that will show through as you. You know, well, you mentioned honesty and integrity. So how important is your character as an entrepreneur? Character is everything. People do business with you if they like, know, and trust. If they don't like you, they're not going to get to the know and trust. So you have to have a personality that is likable. If they do like you and they want to call you up and go have coffee, now they want to get to know you. You have to be interested. And you also have to flip that over where they're interesting to you, right? When you listen to people, you actually have to listen. And each interaction you have with people will support that thought of building that trust, building that, building that. 
until the scales tip and now it's a landslide and people know like and trust you and they work with you. Absolutely, building rapport. So, so how have you developed your listening skill? I have developed my listening skills. I first started developing my listening skills when the internet was really young, right? I was um, up in Montana when I played indoor football. So all I had was a computer and a phone. And I either talked to people on the phone or message people on the computer, hopefully getting them to the phone where I could listen because it was easier to talk than it was. So when I started doing that, I really got into the idea of actually listening. I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm not thinking about my reply. I'm not thinking about giving advice or what worked for me. I'm listening to your story. And I always take a deep breath after they're done myself so I get that tiny in case they want to say something else. And I learned over time that there are many books and many people out there that talked about this subject. That subject. So as I've taken in my books and my education, I've learned from that. Dale Carnegie is one of them where so is uh, Jim Rome, Zig Ziglar, John Maxwell. I don't remember which one it was or where I read it from, but they they said when you're listening and you show attention to somebody, scan their head from from head to toe like you're a sun like in a sun bath, right? And you're just trying to tan their head and you're just looking up, <laughs> up and down, and it really gets them to understand that you're listening. You're not focused on anything else. I really hate when something happens while I'm talking off to the side and people move their head because that's lack of eye contact. That's a break. And you have to then establish that. Why? Talk to them. It's not that hard. Nice. What other personal growth tools have helped you in, in this journey? Obviously, you know, transitioning from athlete to business required some some development and what has been helpful to you i believe from the very beginning of my athletic career i've always been open and in tune to learning from people learning from experiences learning from listening um so i am a huge audible fan i have almost 500 books in audible um and they range from all of my different interests that i have so they can be a biographies, they can be personal development, business information in general. Um, but I typically don't find myself veering off to the entertainment side, right? It's just, if it's not going to be productive in my life, I don't want to wait. On. And really that transition came from knowing, the seeing the dedication in other people to get to a championship level that was higher than I was. I got a championship. I got three of them, but I didn't get a UFC championship, right? So what are they doing? What are they listening to? What are, who is their mentor? What, how do they take in information? And my favorite is Audible. I just, I put it on, I take in, I listen to biographies, do it yourself kind of things. That's how I transition into it but it's been there for my whole life success and the journey of success hasn't changed the destinations might have changed i don't i i retired i no longer want to be a professional football player or i want to be a billionaire so the the destinations but the path on that journey, yeah, a billionaire sounds a lot better than getting punched in the face. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> it sounds better is being a billionaire from punching people in the face. Well, right. Great. Yeah, if you have the option to be the puncher or be the punchy, but I, I think they, they come hand in hand. And so <laughs> they do. I mean, you sign the waiver. So once the waiver's signed, game's on. 
That's right. You mentioned you mentioned mentors. How valuable have mentors been in your personal growth journey? You know, it's funny looking back on my journey so far to find what mentors really did in that moment create this image for me, this idea of how to live life. But at the moment, it was like just a casual conversation. Right. I would be I was co-pilot on our wrestling team where we had trips. So we had the wrestling coach as a driver. I stayed up and made sure that he was OK. I don't sleep very well in cars. I'm a big guy. Right? Like, that doesn't help. So I would just be up and we would talk for hours and hours and hours. And it really finally led me to the breakthroughs of how manifesting your life is achievable. We talked about that a lot, how doing the right things that need to be done for your success consistently over time is the key to having fate work in your favor, right? If you're putting, if you're depositing good in your bank and not bad, you're going to get good out. Mm. It's plain and simple. And it, it goes down to the simplest forms of it. What words are you using? How are you visualizing things? When somebody is talking to you, how do you visualize that? Visualize it as you being the person. Do you visualize yourself as a third party and you're standing there and you're taking it in? All of those things affect the journey that you're on in success. So that's an imperative to Having those times and those conversations were so important to me and, and where I've gone in my life. Nice. So that was your, your wrestling coach. What other, what other coach or mentor has given you a foundation for building your business? As far as my business goes, Andrew right now is a huge mentor. I call him Obi-Wan Kenobi all the time. He's <laughs> a nice. Big Star Wars fan. I enjoy Star Wars. I enjoy a good movie. I enjoy a good story that lasts long times. Give me coming back, right? Like I love the Harry Potter series because it was another movie and there was another part of the story and it just kept going, right? Same sense in Star Wars. But with like Andrew, he had six years to go through and do this before I came in. He has developed a plan. He has developed a passion for it and a love to show other people. So you really have to find those mentors that you connect on, not in just one level. I think a lot of people, they go online, they're like, oh, this person says this, right? And then they, th there's two ways. They either suck to one person and they really haven't done their investigation, but they're like, this person says the right stuff. Or they go from here to here to here to here. And they jump around and there's no solidifying. There's no... There's no learning the entire process from one person. And I think both of those are really dangerous. You really have to know, like, and trust. You also have to understand where you come from. You have to agree with not just one thing that they say, right? Like we can sit here and debate back and forth about politics and which side of the aisle you're on. But if you're like, oh, that's a good idea. Oh, that's a good idea. And you're going back and forth. You're never going to go anywhere forward with. It. Yeah, I think listening to listening to one voice, at least for a period, um, can be so valuable, right? I mean, obviously, you know, you listen to your coach, you don't listen to the other team's coach <laughs> because because he's the one that's on your side, right? Now, and so, right? Like, I would listen to the other kids. I would listen to the other coach to find out, tell them, right, <laughs> what to do here because I'm going to stop quick that's right i want that inside information <laughs> exactly absolutely so let's talk about gratitude um how has being grateful helped you grow gratitude has helped me grow by opening my heart to more possibilities of doing good in the world. Like I said earlier, you bank 
when you make deposits into your good bank over and over and over again, it just explodes into your life. And you don't know exactly where or how that might come out because we're not responsible in this world for the how. <laughs> we're responsible for what do we want? We want the dream, right? The dream and then the universe gives us the how. And when you when you work in that aspect of life and know that the how comes by the universe and not by yourself, you forget all the hows. We want to focus. We want to really break it down to the smallest speck, the atom. We want to find the atom of what our dreams and success really looks like. And gratitude opens your feelings and emotions help multiply those attractions it is literally the best thing i've ever done yeah i think uh gratitude is definitely a, a way to change change your attitude instantly right it's an instant attitude changer and and i like that that connection to the universe that connection to god that uh that gratitude can make um to open yourself up to to the how, right? To, to the execution for your manifestation. Um, that's pretty powerful. Um, I mean, it so. is your connection to God, right? It is because God states that he is love and that he loves everybody. And that he is, a, there's always good coming from. You. So if you don't take one minute, literally one minute and review your life at that moment, grateful for the things that you have, you lose that connection. That means you don't have the rope anymore that you can pull these attractive things to your life. You don't, you can't get your goals and dreams if you're not connected. Nice. That's so good. All right. Let's, let's switch it up a little bit. What's, okay. uh, what was your most memorable date? Ooh, most memorable date. And hopefully it's with Brady. I'm not going to pressure you there, but. <laughs> My most memorable date is with Brady. But it wasn't a date. It was the first time that we got to interact with each other outside of everything. I had, the first time I ever met Brady was when I was headlining a MMA fight, my first MMA professional fight. And it was her first sponsorship fight. So it was the first time she was there. So I come walking into the arena and I'm like, yeah, I'm big sexy. I see the new girl. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I smile at her. She's shy and looks down. I was like, fine, that's okay. I'll talk to you later. I go back, I, I come back out and I smile at her again and she doesn't do anything but put her head down. And I was like, fine, I'll never talk to you. No problem. So for six months, six months, I didn't really talk to her. And I'm working at View House on opening day, and she's got all of her friends and family. She calls me out of the blue while I'm in the dance floor of View House. And for whatever reason, we shut the door down, kicked all the drunk people out, opened back up, and it was right at that moment. So I get to go outside and see her to bring her in, and she gives me this reaction like, Ha, I told you so, not knowing that they were just, hammer her like you can't get into view house you don't know anybody you can this is this is ridiculous we're not going here and i come walking out and let her in but the next three hours there was no other drunk people in there we kicked them all out by the time she got there so i got like three hours of just face-to-face -face relaxation watching what's going on on the floor but she was standing right there so out of all the times that I ever got to experience another person in my life, that was definitely the most memorable. Nice. That's so cool. And of course, now you guys are married and about to have your first baby. Um, congratulations, by the way. Um, that's so exciting. Um, Thank you. So, so where was your favorite dinner? My favorite dinner with Brady or my favorite dinner ever? You, know, you can just go for the food side, or you could say a, a dinner together. With either way, uh, if I had to pick one place that I go on a consistent basis, it's 
Red Robin. Nice. All you French fries and a, a burger that tastes good. They're always experimenting. I've been a fan of Red Robin my entire life since they've been around, right? They've been they've been in Colorado for a long time. So uh, Red Robin is definitely my favorite. Nice. That's awesome. So, so what's the big dream for Heath? And is what are you manifesting? I am, my goal is to become a billionaire, and I will feel that I'm successful at that goal when I reach fifteen billion five hundred seventy six million nine hundred seven thousand three dollars and thirty four cents. So, however, that has to be. nice. And and what is your what do you, what is your dream to use that money for? I want to create a foundation called the Dream Filler Foundation, where we supply youth. Uh, athletes with scholarships to go to summer camp at colleges they want to go to so they can be exposed to the staff learn the system be uh more marketable when they come out of high school and college so that people get a, a head start on knowing who they are from that i want to also create a scholarship a continually a continuous scholarship that allows the people that are granted that scholarship to then be on the board later to give back to another person. I want them to put the time to finding somebody that is worthy of the money to continue that scholarship on for. Finally, I want to be able to give businesses, small business loans that are simple interest loans. As long as you're paying the interest, I won't call the principal and be able to provide the resources that they might need to help their business wherever they are right now um, in accounting, in legal, in marketing, in every aspect of manufacturer production, anything like that. I want to be able to have the connections and be like, thank you for trusting us to help you with your business and your goal. Here are the resources that you will need. The phone numbers, call them. Nice. That's terrific. So, so what inspires Brady? Or what inspires Heath? Sorry, got so caught up in your wife's name that <laughs> I love my wife's name too, right? It's super unique and it's even spelled differently. And nice. B R E E. But what inspires me is definitely intrinsic. I've always wanted to be person that gets their hand raised. the person that gets to put their helmet in the air and cheer and run on the field because we want to and that the opportunities that i've had to actually be that person have been phenomenal and they continuously drive me each day but really i want to be one of one right like i i want to take the biggest number if you think of how many college athletes have ever been how many college athletes have been two sport collegiate athletes? And out of those two sports, how many of those have been an all American within one of those sports? I'm thinking like maybe one of one, right? One of 12, one of 300. To get yourself into those one of situations and you be one of them is one of those inspiring things that I just want every single day i want to find my one of one one of 330 million people i'm that one nice that's awesome so what's what's been your biggest challenge in in building your business building your brand and and being a husband myself preparing to be a father <laughs> I have uh, I have idle hand disease. I don't have I don't have alcoholism. It runs in my family. I don't have drug addiction. It runs in my family. I have idle hand. I am not motivated to do and fire to something. I have a really easy tendency to take the easy route, to not wake up on time go out drinking, to go out smoking, to go out doing everything available 
right? I, I really say idle hands do the devil's work, right? It's the devil's workshop. And I have gotten in the most trouble in my life. I have achieved major success in negativity situations when I don't have positive goals and, and something to achieve. So it's myself. Myself stands in my way the most. And becoming sober in January of this year really was a spotlight on that and what life could be like. After you make that choice to not go into that realm of, I don't know what you would call it, but the way you feel, like that euphoric feeling when you go get or you go you go break the cycle and and look for something to do that's not productive so consistent and you want that break those breaks are the longer you live in the break from reality the longer it takes to get out of it the more damage you do to the people around you Coming to the realization that I need to be completely sober, able to handle life on life terms, really was an awakening for myself. And you can see it now, right? I'm in an industry my resilient. I'm in a relationship that is loving and supportive, and we are growing not only together, but as a family, right? actually get to be a part of a family that's mine and i can tell you right now if i didn't make that choice to be sober this would not be mine. who knows what substance i could have destroyed my you know, manhood ability i wouldn't be able to ever have kids because it was dark days so i have idle I, I don't put anything in front of my plate i feel like on go wake up in the morning to go after it. Pretty nice. Well, uh, congratulations on on making that choice to to be sober and to honor yourself and your family in uh, in choosing what's better for you. Um, that's certainly obviously you you recognize now the value of that decision. Um, so so what has been what has been the most helpful to to stop you from these idle hands and uh, <laughs> making good choices. The easiest and, and the most effective thing that is ever in my life to change my attitude about drugs and alcohol is a memory of having my wife in tears asking me legitimate questions on why would I marry you? Or why are you doing this? It's a very emotional and personal situation, memory that will last with me forever. Because the feeling of life down in my relationship was heartbreaking. It was devastating. Yeah, no, that you're the reason. And that was the moment that I asked for help. Good for you. It is so important in life to understand that if you ask for help, it's not weak. Asking for help is the strongest thing that you can do in your life. You can no longer do it on your own. This life is not meant to be a lone wolf, a, a one of the pack, like, right? A lone wolf. Lone wolves don't last. Wolves move in packs. Predators hunt in packs. Because if you're alone by yourself and you're that one deer, like, good luck. Right. You'll get taken hey. down. And, and what we what we need to realize as humans is that asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It's a 
strongest thing that you can do for yourself at that time because you need the help. When you do get that help, you realize that this isn't something that you can do on your own. Now you have those resources available to you. Super important. But nobody goes anywhere. Nobody until you act. Nobody's going to come by and be like, oh, it looks like you need help uh, getting out of it. Because you can then turn around and, and if it was you, right, Robert, you come over and I'm like, it looks like you need help with addiction. And I'd be like, F you. <laughs> Get out of here. What are you talking about? I can do it on my own. And then I go out and try to do it on my own and it doesn't go anywhere. No. Yeah, the first, the first uh you know, rule in addiction recovery is that you have to choose it. <laughs> you, you have to want it for yourself. A hundred percent, right? A hundred percent. You have to choose for yourself. And it's pretty powerful to have your wife in tears asking you, what on earth are we doing here? Like that's, that's pretty powerful motivation. So good for you for taking responsibility and, and making that move forward. Um, because if you can do that, you can do anything. I think that's one thing that I've always done in my life is I've never been afraid to take responsibility. For mm. Afraid to say, yeah. Um, and after those times, everybody loves a good comeback, right? Everybody loves a, a sense of let's go back out, kick some butt, right? And that's what happens. That's why, like in FOAD, it's fearless overcoming. Like that word overcoming is not just developed for like, oh, I got hurt in a game and I have to overcome this. Or we threw an interception and now we have to come back and get a, a, a fumble or an interception, right? That is overcoming in that moment. But overcoming is lasts and inspires through the entire world. Overcoming and doing comebacks and – those are the stories that everybody loves because we want to know that it's true that at any moment in your world and in your life, you can stop what you're doing right now and do something different. You can always stop what you're doing. Yeah, and, and overcoming can be as simple as, as your mindset, the negativity. It can be, it can be as simple as um, the self-belief, the self-doubt. Um, and so those are those are huge things to overcome. You know, fear of public speaking, fear of, you know, fear of fear of networking, right? Yeah. I mean, those those are real, you know, for a lot of people. And so overcoming is definitely being willing to put yourself in situations that make you uncomfortable. Um, and as entrepreneurs, you know, we we have to do that all the time if we're going to grow a business. And almost every day, right? Like <laughs> about the sense of when you were a kid and you're like, Oh, I don't want to go to school today. <coughs> Mom, I don't feel. <coughs> if you did that in your own business today, you have to overcome that feeling to get out of bed because it's, it, that feeling never goes away. Oh my gosh. My bed's so comfortable. Oh my gosh. My wife is so cuddly. Oh my gosh. I'm so warm under this blanket. I don't ever want to move. That feeling doesn't go away. That feeling is always there because you're always going to go back to bed. You always have to wake up, right? Well, it's that it's that lizard brain saying you don't need to go outside. There's dangerous stuff out there, right? Like it's always better to stay in here, um, and that's and that's where motivation is a misnomer, right? Like there's no there's no motivation. There's there's doing, and you, you just have to <laughs> you just have to the the Yoda the Yoda in you has to step up and say. We're done. We're done with this. We have to just go do because trying is preparation and we can spend all of our time in preparation and, and never do anything. Oh. And I mean, I'm at a point in my life where I don't know if I even prepare anymore. Um, I'm not saying that I don't go study and learn. But on preparation for podcasts and for social media and for – like I went and trained for the fight. But when it was fight time, it wasn't like I was – it was like, let's go do this. There is only doing in this world. And, and 
creating what you want to do is literally taking it out of your mind, putting it on paper, go do it. Absolutely. All right. So I, I end every conversation with the chance for you to share your words of wisdom. So what are Heath's words of wisdom to other entrepreneurs out there? My words of wisdom. Oh, it's, it's really close, right? I, I'm a big believer in doing, um, but I'm going to throw this one out. The word try should be eliminated from your vocabulary. Replace it with the word attempt because then you only fail or succeed at the attempt and you don't try anything. Removing the word try in your life will change your life dramatically because you really start changing that mindset of doing or not doing. So I would say remove the word try from your vocabulary. I like it. Like it can go right there in the next to can't. <laughs> Absolutely. Heath, thank, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your story and uh, looking forward to uh, seeing that baby Heath and uh, <laughs> you're, you get to, you getting to grow as a, as a, as a husband and father. And that's just so exciting and, uh, and growing your business alongside to support your family. So thanks. Thanks again for, for coming on today. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me. It's been a wonderful time. Well, if you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. We have a free gift for you at add value number two entrepreneurs.com. We've created a collection of the top tips that have been shared on our show for entrepreneurs. Do you struggle with procrastination, putting off the work until the last minute? Well, you are not alone. Many of our clients start there. We are launching a new five day challenge to help you take more action and make more money in your business. Each day is a 10 minute video lesson and a worksheet. If you take 15 to 30 minutes to do the worksheet, it will change your life in business and exponentially increase the amount of work you get done each day. Right now it is only $27 and contains five of our best tools for helping you move forward. It can be found at addvalue2life.com slash action. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day.